Good morning, Pathfinders. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Grant, and that's all you need to know. Um, treasured. Let me get this clicker, because then it will remind me what to talk about. So apparently I have uh, about 45 minutes to talk. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah? Is that all good? If you want me to go shorter, you can have an arm wrestle, and let's see if you win, we'll go shorter. Yeah? You reckon? What do you treasure? What do you treasure? It's a question I want to leave there. I'm a new father. I have two kids. And uh, with my wife, I, we treasure our kids very much. And uh, part of treasuring our kids is, um, you know, creating environments or putting them in a space where they feel welcome and they feel loved. That's what I treasure. Today we're going to go through two parables. Now, parables were used in Scripture as a way to interact a meaning, a spiritual truth or moral. So there was, Jesus used parables to speak into the lives of many. Um, and and in, so, in doing so, there was a hidden truth behind it. So the first, first parable we're going to be looking at is the parable of joy. When you stumble and you discover this joy. Now, I, I've got many clothes, and my wife keeps telling me that I need to get rid of some of them. Um, but every t- there's been some occasions where I'll go into my jacket, I put my jacket on, and I put my hand in my pocket, and I find some money. And I'm like, bro, I'm not telling my wife that's there. The type of joy, when you discover, when you stumble onto this joy, you just, it just fills you immensely, Right? So that's the first parable. The second parable talks about the value of the search. When you're searching, you understand the value of the thing you're searching, and you go looking for it, and you go looking for it. All right? So those are the two parables we're going to be speaking about. For our local members, uh, we're going to be turning to Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. It's a story, um, talks about this guy who stumbles on treasure. And when he stumbles on this treasure, what does he do? Yeah. Awesome. Well done. So, yeah, so he stumbles on this joy. He stumbles on this treasure, and then he goes, I'm going to hide it. Now, how many of us do that sometimes? We find something like, I don't want my brother or my sister to know I have that. Because that means you'd have to share, right? Now, I've got a few siblings. I'm the oldest of the four siblings I have. And I don't like sharing, but I have to share because, because it's the good thing to do as an older brother, So apparently. Uh, but I do. So this man stumbles on this joy, and he hides his treasure. But this joy is so overwhelming, it consumes him. He sells everything as... The young fella just said over there, he sells everything because he, knew, he knows that in that field, there's going to be more and more joy that he's going to stumble on. Yeah? That's our first parable. Our second parable is in the same, same chapter, Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. And it talks about a merchant. Now, a merchant, I think in our days, you could call him a hustler, you know, just goes around and tries to hustle and, you know, try and make them meet, find different streams of income, and he keeps searching. But this merchant, he goes and searching for one pearl, one pearl, and that was the most treasured position that he was searching for. And when he does that, what happens? Does anyone know? He does the same thing as the other guy that stumbled on the joy. He goes and sells everything because he understands the value of what he was searching for. Throughout this whole chapter in Matthew chapter 13, there's many, many parables. So parables, again, short stories that just elevates a moral or spiritual truth. And Jesus used a lot of these parables to communicate to the people of the day. These days, 
less is more, I think. So if my, I got an 85-year-old grandma, and she responds when I send her, how are you, grandma? She sends an emoji. And that just sums up her whole day. And I'm just like, what is going on? She is 85, and she's sending me emojis. And now these days, it's all about less is more. And so Jesus used these parables to try and communicate to every single person that was in the audience. And so in these days, we use the same thing. We use different ways of communication so we can reach different types of people. I want you to meet my oldest daughter. Her name is Tiamina. So that her name comes from our Indonesian great, great, oh, I don't know how many greats, but three times G's, greats, grandmother from Indonesia. That's her name. In this picture, I call her my little gangster. She takes my hat and she walks around the hospital. In this moment, Tiamina, we're at a Christmas carol and she went to see some kid goats. And then she got bitten, just a little nibble. And as a parent, it broke our heart. Oh, we thought, oh, that's right, just wash it off. And you be right, mate, you be right, like, you know, two-year-old. And then the very next day, the whole, her hand from the tip of her finger down to the middle of her palm was red. Uh-oh, our most treasured possession. Our oldest child was in so much pain. So we had to take her back to the hospital. She had to go into surgery. Oh, oh, now, I'm not going to try and get emotional about this, but she got into surgery, and the surgery went for half an hour. And throughout that time, my heart was thumping, and I couldn't imagine what my wife was going through because our treasured possession was going through Something that I was willing to take her place for. I was willing to step in to take her pain away from her. Now she's all right. She's over there. She's very quiet, so thankfully. Um, But as a parent, there are things that we do. I'm talking to parents. I'm talking to grandparents now. There are things that we do to try and ensure that our kids grow up in a healthy and strong environment. And and whatever hinders that path, whatever, you know, disrupts that, we remove that as parents because we feel we know what is best for our kids. Right? I am a treasured possession. Now, I recently um, work for... Uh, this guy, and um, throughout my years of searching for value in community and value in people, searching for value in material things, I had realized that that continued to fall away every single time until I met this new guy. And I, at first, I had walked away from this particular, this particular guy. Because I didn't see the joy and value in who he was. And then it wasn't until over some lunch that I stumbled on and I reminded myself of this joy. This joy. And as that joy continued to grow, I started to now search for him every single day. Now, let you know now, I'm not a perfect guy. And um, when people see me, the first thing they see is they're either scared or they look the other way. And I get that often, and that's okay. So I always, and the members of our church here, you will always see me smile because that is the friendliest way to communicate. Hey, I am friendly. I'm okay. I won't tackle you to the ground. Right? So... As I met this guy, he continued to empower, encourage, and inspire new ways and new identity of who I am. And as it says in there, 
I am a treasured possession because of him, because I feel the worth, the value that he continues to put in my life. Now, it's never easy. It's never easy, but I'm reminded that I am a treasured possession by this guy. You, your theme this year has been treasured. Now, I scan the internet, and what do I talk about? And what does treasured mean? We just had a review. We've had all your leaders here involved. And I know Dino from last year, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Before we even walked in the door, he was very emotional. Parents, you are treasured, you are valuable, and you are loved. This guy that I know, he's pretty cool. Like, he, he's pretty cool. And it's not until I search for him diligently that my joy continued to consume my life. As I said, I stumbled, just like the guy in the first parable that we had. He stumbled on this joy, hit it, sold everything he had because he knew there was more joy in that field. The second parable talked about a merchant searching for pearl. He sold everything because he knew the value of his search. Parents, you being here today is a testimony to the amazing job our pathfinders do every single year. So you are valuable, you are loved, and you are treasured. To our pathfinders, now as you guys grow up, don't have so much responsibilities yet. And you'll be challenged of who you are, if you're treasured, if you're loved. And you will be wrestling with all this. I want you guys to know that in the community of pathfinders, I believe that you are treasured, you are valuable, and you are loved. Thank you so much for doing what you guys do. I think that's my 45 minutes.